you know, chipping doesn't have to be that hard. In these next three videos, I'm going to share with you some of the real secrets to making chipping easy. People have told me time and time again this has helped them tremendously on their short game, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go and get started. All right, in today's video, I'm going to share with you some absolute secrets on pitching it like a pro. Now, I'm not talking about pitching it okay or decent or pretty good. I'm talking about absolutely being a magician around the greens and being able to feel like you can set up over a shot like this and hit every single one of them with spin close to the hole to almost feel like you could just toss it up there within tap in range every single time. It can be that easy. I'm on a fairly tight lie here. Some people might get nervous on this. This isn't really long fluffy grass. You'll see all these are coming out clean and I'm just chopping them right up there by the hole. It can be easy once you learn the right technique. Now, there's a couple things I'm gonna go over in this video. I'm gonna go over what I call the front shoulder pivot and we're gonna talk about how to get absolutely laser dialed in on your low point. You notice all those Looked like I was barely just brushing the grass and I had an open face 60 degree wedge, but they're coming out low with a lot of spin. I wanna share with you the secrets on how to make that happen. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump into the details on this. I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece. Now, as I started diving more and more into short game and really trying to master it myself, I realized it is extremely frustrating because there's so many different styles. You see some people saying to lock the hips in the lower body and use more of an upper body like a putting type stroke. You see some people talking about rotating the body. Some people are going to tell you that you need to have a little more of a cut swing. Some people are going to tell you you need a little bit more of a draw swing. Play it off the toe, play it off the center, have the hands low, have the hands high. You're hearing all this different stuff and I'm not saying that a lot of that doesn't work. And really, I think you can do a lot of different styles and make it work. I'm gonna share with you the style that I have found works the best, and I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece, and I'm gonna give you some drills that are gonna seem a little counterintuitive, honestly. But once you try those out, you're gonna see the results firsthand. You're gonna see me hit some great shots here. And I know if you follow this, you're gonna have a lot of success with it. So this isn't the only style that works, but this is a style that if you practice this, you do the drills that I'm gonna give you here, make sure you bookmark this because you're going to want to refer to it because you're going to be chipping and pitching it awesome when you're doing this. So first off, I want my feet very close together. If my feet are farther apart and I'm using a kind of locked lower body style where I let my upper body do most of the work, I do not like that at all. And the reason is once you get a little farther away from the green like this, then locking your lower body, you really have to use so much upper body and hands and arms. Like you really start to jab at it. It can be not that good once you get farther away. Now, if I have a little 10, 12 foot putt or a 20, 10 or 12 foot chip, that can work perfectly fine. But as I get a little bit more distance, I wanna go ahead and let that body rotate. I want my knees really close together. I want my feet really close together. I like to have my stance a little bit open as I go over here in a second, but I want them close together. That way I can pivot and rotate back and through and just as I was gonna toss a golf ball up to the hole. So that's the first piece. I almost feel like you're your heels are within two or three inches of each other would be really good on a shot like this. And I really want my body to rotate back and through so that it's creating a momentum. And that's what we'll go over a common theme in all this is that you wanna have a momentum to your body and let it go back and through rather than, rather than trying to get jerky or jabby. Number two, I wanna have the face a little bit open. Simply for this, it gives me a little bit more margin for error for a couple reasons. As I open the face, this flange on the bottom of the club starts to get exposed and it helps it glide through the turf, which means less chunking and less thinning. It also allows me to get a little more forward shaft lean without de-lofting the club too much. So here I have a 60 degree wedge. I'm gonna open the face a little, that probably turns it to, let's say 65 degrees, something like that. And then I'm gonna lean the shaft forward a little bit which turns it back to its, you know, a little less than 60 degrees at address. So that way my hands can be leaning in front. My hands can be leading the way as I make contact to this, which will make the contact more consistent and I'll still have enough loft there to generate some spin. So here, a little bit open, the hands are leading the way. And again, I'm rotating my body every single time, getting that nice clean contact, even made one. All right, so this is gonna be pretty good. I feel like this is gonna be a, a nice video where everything's gonna start to come together from you. So we're off on a good start here, feet close together, body rotating, 
play the face a little bit open, play the hands a little bit up. Here's the part that is the most important of any of it. It's contact. You'll notice when I'm hitting these shots that I'm brushing the turf. I'm not digging down into it. So I'm not playing my hands forward with this late leading edge square and hitting down into that where I'm really chopping down into the ground. If I do that, I could start to lay the sod over it. I could start to chunk some and thin some. So we definitely don't want that to happen because we're gonna be inconsistent if we start to hit down into the ground too much. I'm also letting the momentum dictate my low point. So as I swing back and through here, as I go back and through, I'm feeling like, almost like I could take two fingers and just barely kind of let the momentum of the club swing as I let it fall out of my hands. That's how loose I'm holding it here, but I let the momentum of this club swing and I could brush the turf. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna open the face slightly, I'm gonna let my body pivot and I'm just gonna take a couple fingers here in my left hand and I'm gonna feel like I just brush the ground. That's the feeling that I wanna have to create that. So the reason the ball is coming out low is not because I'm de-lofting the club. The reason the ball is coming out low is because I, I do have a little forward shaft lean, but I'm hitting it so clean. What's happening is this club face is grabbing the ball. There's a lot of friction there. And because I'm, I'm hitting down on it slightly or level with the ground, that ball is grabbing the club face and coming out lower. It's not the loft on the club that's making that go fairly low. And on this one, I'm actually gonna play the face open again. You'll see this by looking at my club face, it's fairly open. And I'm gonna to try to hit one really low just with a lot of really good friction. There you go, you see that never got much higher than pin high. I hit it a little hard trying to get more spin on it. And you'll see that it checked up. I almost landed to the hole and only rolled out five or six feet. Same thing there, not really getting much above pin high. And you can see those checking up right by the flag. So the only way that can happen is getting good friction on there. The only way that you can get good friction is really control your low point by letting the club momentum dictate where you ground out. And you can see that one was nice and low there too. Let me hit one more, and then I'm gonna show you the best drill to get the feel of this momentum for yourself. And to really dial in on how I can come down and make the cleanest contact possible every time. So let's jump up on the green. I'm gonna show you a drill that works great for this. All right, now here's the part that I warned you about that's gonna seem a little bit odd. So I'm here on the putting green. They just recently um, aerified the green. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing this on the course like I am today, but the green's a little bit rough anyways. I do this on the chipping green. Find right by the edge of the green where you're not really gonna mess anything up, even if you take a little bit of a divot as you're first learning this. But after you've done it a while, I'm telling you, you're, you're gonna get just so precise, laser-like precision on your low point. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So what we're trying to be able to do here, if you're gonna be a fantastic pitcher and chipper of the golf ball, is I have to be able to control when my club comes down, I need to be able to have it hit the ground in the same spot every single time and at the same depth. So you can see I'm swinging hard enough there to where I'm actually roughing up. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a smack. You can see some sand kind of popping up as I'm doing that. And because my club face is a little open, it's just the bounce of the club is kind of skipping on the turf. It's not that leading edge. If you expose that leading edge, you're gonna have difficulty digging into the ground. So if I expose that leading edge, I can hit a little too far down, chunk it and it pops up. I can hit it a little thin and it shoots across the green. If I have the face a little bit open like this, I can still get a little forward shaft lean and that leading edge just isn't quite exposed there. I'm never gonna dig. You can see I've, I've hit this ground 10, 15 times and I'm not digging down there. Now there's a difference here in how you've probably seen people say that before and you probably think, well, you know, Clay, I would just do that. If I could control it like that, I'd just do it. I'm gonna show you the technique that makes that possible. What you wanna do is almost feel like you focus on your left shoulder, almost feel like you have a little reverse pivot. So as I come back, I'm almost leaning left as I'm going my back. So I'm gonna exaggerate so you can see that. And then you'll notice I'm doing that a very small amount in my normal swing. So here I'm leaning left. And then as I come through, I'm falling a little bit back. And as I fall back, my hips extend. So I'm not doing this. That's the death move. I'm keeping my chest down. That's the death move for chipping. I'm doing this. I'm leaning left 
And as I fall back, now my body's moving back, my hips are moving forward, my hips are toward the target because I've rotated. And because I'm falling back a little bit, that controls my club from digging in the ground. I can feel like I'm throwing this thing in the ground as hard as I want to, but as long as I come back this way, what happens is that left shoulder rises and I feel like I couldn't chunk this thing if I wanted to, because as I fall this way, it just levels it out. It's like taking this club. Imagine I was gonna drop it into the ground like this. So I have the club here and I'm just gonna let this thing fall into the turf. But what happens when I lift my hand up? Right, as my hand starts to turn back up, it levels it out like a, like a plane coming into a runway. It comes down, it levels out, and then it's gonna come back up if it wants to. Same thing's happening here. I'm letting the momentum of the club swing and I'm letting the pivot of my left shoulder in my body, make sure that that never digs down in the turf. That's why I can take just with one hand, I'll move this ball so you can see, I could take just with one hand and I could just brush the turf there every single time. It's not like I'm some fantastic athlete. I'm just using the momentum of the club and the pivot of my body to control that low point. So what I'm feeling there, a little forward shaft lean, I'm leaning this way, my left shoulder's coming down. I'm exaggerating here on that. You'll see me doing it more uh, to a smaller degree in the real one. And then as I come through, my shoulder leans back and that keeps me from digging. That's how you can get this low point control really, really good. And eventually what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to hit these golf balls off the screen and feel like we're never gonna take a divot. I hit that one about 30 feet in the air. I'm never gonna take a divot, I'm never gonna dig. And I could just sit in here and hit them all day. So I've hit two in a row both of those flew at least 30 feet. They ended up almost 50 feet from me and I didn't dig anything into the ground. I still hit the turf. I still brushed the grass a little bit, but you can look on the camera. You see, there's no, there's no digging. I'm not roughing up that turf at all. So I'm making really nice, clean contact. Now I'm going a little farther. That one flew about 50 feet in the air. And I'm gonna go even farther than that here and make a little harder swing just to show you, you can ramp this up and go faster and faster once you get it down. And that's about the max I can do. That's about a 70 footer. That was just a little tiny bit thin there, but even for this drill, that would be pushing it. So I really just wanna do this, feeling that momentum of the club and just practice by hitting little five and 10 foot chips like that. Now here's the way you get your precision in on it. What's gonna happen is if you go straight to the turf, you're gonna get a little bit nervous. You're gonna feel like you don't wanna dig down in there and you're gonna pick it up, or you're not gonna have that pivot down yet and it's gonna to wanna to dig on you. You're gonna chunk it one time and you're gonna to wanna to quit this drill. Here's how you wanna start with a bucket of sand. And I'll be honest with you, most people aren't gonna do what I say here. And most people aren't gonna get the success that you get if you do what I say here. But if you take the time to do this, every day, or, or at least seven times, I would say, here's how it's gonna happen. The first time you do this drill, you're gonna think, daggone it, this is impossible. I'm never gonna get this. This is so hard. I don't know what Clay's talking about. I can't feel the pivot. I can't feel my left shoulder. I can't feel the momentum of the club. It's really, really tough. The second time you do this drill, you're gonna think, man, that was hard, but oh, that one, I actually hit pretty decent. By the third time you do this drill, and the fourth and the fifth, it's gonna to start to feel pretty good. By the sixth and seventh time, it's gonna feel just completely natural. Like you can just brush this turf every single time. It's not gonna be that hard for you. But if you quit after the first one, you're never gonna to get to the good stuff. So here's what I wanna feel. Again, it's like if this club was gonna sort of fall down in the ground, I'm lifting my hands up to keep it from digging there. I'm doing that by letting my shoulder come down. And you watch a lot of great pictures of the golf ball. The they're gonna look like they're leaning a little left and then as they come through, they're falling back this way, away from the target. So I'm gonna set up a little pile of sand about an inch tall here. And what I wanna do is I just wanna clip the very top portion of that sand. So I've hit that sand now, and I've made two swings. I barely touched it that time. Three swings, I'm just clipping little grains of sand off there. I missed it that time. But I'm gonna keep on going, and I'm just gonna fast forward here until all this sand's gone. Right, and I've rushed it now down to where all the sand pile's gone and there's nothing left. I'm gonna see how many strikes I can make with an inch tall pile of sand until I get down to the bottom. And if I can get four, five, or six little swipes 
where I just take a little bit of sand off and a little bit more sand off, a little bit more sand off, then I'm really controlling the low point. Now, you don't have to do that very much. 15, 20 swings, and you'll be surprised how much better of a feel you have for this. And again, two, three, four days in a row, and now all of a sudden you have a really good feel to where you can just kind of pick it every single time. It's so common to see players chunk and thin shots around the green, but what if I told you it is really simple to hit clean chip shots day in and day out, really close to the hole, if you know the right technique. I'm gonna go over some of the biggest mistakes that you can make, and if you're making these, man, you're making chipping hard. Let's go and get started. All right, so mistake number one, putting the ball too far back in your stance. And usually this comes also with putting your feet too far apart. So you do wanna hit down on this golf ball. I do wanna be hitting down, hitting the ball first and then the ground in front. I may clip a little bit of the grass before the ball is completely fine. And I also wanna have forward shaft lean. So I want my hands leading in front of the club head when I hit this shot. Now to do that, it's really easy to think, well, I can just put the ball back in my stance. That's gonna basically make it where I have to hit down because there's really no way to scoop up when I'm back here on the back of my stance. And my hands are definitely gonna be in front when they're like this. But if my feet are this far apart and my weight is also on my left side, like we've heard, you know, basically everybody says, this ball is way far back of where my low point is. So if my weight's on my left side, I'm gonna be kind of grounding out or the low point of my, my swing arc would be kind of under my, the inside of my left shoulder here. So that would be somewhere around here. When I put this ball this far back in my stance, the, really the only way to reach to it is to start to chop down too far, very much descending into the golf ball. It's very easy to do that and just cold stub it. And we do a couple of those and what ends up happening is our brain says, I sure as heck don't want to do that anymore. That's super embarrassing. Let me try to not hit the ground now. And I start to get a little bit of this chicken wing type action, or I try to pull the club up from slamming into the ground and I end up getting one of these. Where you just kind of top it across or skull it across the green, your arms fold up. Basically the most embarrassing things that can happen because now you're deathly afraid of just slamming the club in the ground or sculling it across the green. Yeah, that's no fun, not a good way to play golf. If we get the right ball position, things get a lot easier. So I like to put the feet much closer together. It allows me to rotate more easily through the shot, which I'll get to here in a second, but it also allows me to play this ball kind of on my left heel here. So depending on where the camera's lined up, this may not be perfectly lined up, but I want the ball to be on the left heel. That way when my weight is on my left side, now my ball is there too. So the left inside of my left shoulder is kind of directly, just barely in front of the golf ball. So my low spot is really good, is really good in relationship to where the golf ball is. So now I can have those hands forward. I can hit just a basic bump and run chip here. And that's gonna be pretty solid results time and time out. Even if I get a little too down in it, I hit a little too much ground, it's gonna be fine because my low point is gonna be just in front of that golf ball. With that ball back in my stance, not going to be good. I'm going to feel really jerky over top of this ball. Number two would be decelerating. One of the worst things that you can do is making too big of a backswing. A lot of times I'll see players make a big backswing and all of a sudden they're slowing down. Man, that makes me nervous just even thinking about it. That's going to be very inconsistent. So I'd like to see roughly the same length backswing as you have follow through. That makes it really easy to make sure I'm accelerating through the shot and I'm gonna make that good, clean contact. And it's not really gonna feel like I have to do that much work to make it happen. So there, I even chunked that one just a hair, but because my low point was good, because I accelerated through it, it rolled out and it ended up just as good as if I'd hit it perfectly clean. All right, so the next one is locking up your legs. This is a really, really tough one. The reason this one is so prevalent is because it makes sense at surface level. If I think about, I'm gonna, keep my legs dead still, I'm not gonna move my legs, I'm just gonna go upper body, well, that eliminates one of your degrees of freedom. If I eliminate the legs, I should be more consistent. There's less things that can go wrong. Unfortunately, when you do this, when you lock up those legs, now I have to do everything with my upper body and my arms. So I tend to get way too handsy. My wrist is gonna tend to break down like this. Might get a little bit of a chicken wing there. That's all coming from not rotating the lower body and the knees. So if I do this properly, I wanna go ahead and have my knees pivot as I'm coming back and through. One thing that really helps with this is getting your feet a little bit more open toward the target. I don't like to have my feet square like this because I feel like I'm having to use my hands to go across my body. 
when you look at really good chippers and pitchers of the golf ball, they're almost all gonna set up with their feet slightly open to where the target is lined up. So I like to have this front foot open and the back foot kind of facing toward the target too. And that's gonna help me to get my knees rotating. From there, I'm not worried about keeping my knees still at all. I'm gonna go ahead, let my knees rotate back and through, and that's gonna give me a good feeling of rhythm. And it's gonna give me a good, you know, fluidness through the golf ball to hit it really clean. If I point my feet forward, if I lock up my lower body, I'm all hands and arms, it's gonna be a disaster. You're just gonna hit so many thin ones and chunks, it's gonna be really miserable doing it that way. You may be able to do that if you're using a super low lofted club and you're not very far from the hole. Here I'm a little bit farther. If I was only 10 or 15 feet from the hole and I was using a seven iron, maybe I could use more of a bump and run type putting stroke and just have my arms go back and through. The problem with that is once I get any farther than that, this simple putting stroke is not gonna be fast enough. I couldn't use a putting stroke to get the ball from here to that, that hole. So I have to start breaking everything down. That's when it goes out of whack. So it's not that you can't use a putting stroke to chip. It's just, you can only do that when it's really close. Once it gets a little farther, it just makes it impossible to make that happen. Lastly here, I wanna have my weight on my front foot, but again, I wanna make sure that it's not my feet way far apart like this. I'm gonna have my feet close together. So my feet are fa fairly balanced. They don't feel like it's way out of whack. Like I don't feel like I'm like this when I'm over it and I'm way to the left. I'm just favoring my left side a little bit. My heels are only gonna be not even a golf club head width apart. And then from there, with my weight staying a little bit left, I feel like I can just pivot around that left leg and my knees and my body are gonna rotate on through. You see, if I do that, I can get really consistent results. I just need to learn to aim a little bit more to the left. But those are all hit pretty clean. Follow those tips and you'll hit clean shots too. All right, today we're gonna to talk about how to hit those wedges that have one hop and stop, nice spin on them, really good action. There's a few key things you can do that make this a lot easier and to know how to spot the right conditions where you can hit those spinning shots. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's dive right into it. This video isn't gonna to be tons of fluff. I'm gonna get right into the technique and we're gonna talk about how to do this. Piece number one, you wanna make sure that you're really aggressive, accelerate with your body and accelerate through the shot. So if I have a little shorter backswing and I really move on through there aggressively, I don't want to start to slow down. When my body slows down, what ends up happening is my hands and wrists take over. I start to flip it a little bit. And that's that shot that drives us crazy where it just kind of floats up in the air, not much spin. A lot of times it lands short of the green, really, really aggravating. It's nice to have those low penetrating shots that cut through the, the, through the wind, stay nice and low, tons of spin on them so we can hit over a bunker or something like this and then really get the ball to grab. So that's the first key. Have to be really aggressive through there when I'm hitting this shot. Number two, I like to open my stance a little bit and preset my hips a little bit open. If I do that, so if I go ahead and open my feet slightly, I'll even have my right foot slightly open here along with my left foot, that's gonna help me to open everything up. As I start to open everything up, that makes it easier to get this shaft leaning forward so I can make a cleaner contact on this ball. Now I'm gonna hit a few, some of them are gonna be good, some of them aren't gonna be that good. We're gonna try to hit a nice low spinners on every single one of these. So now, aggressive through the shot, I've opened both my feet up and I really feel like I'm gonna pinch this ball into the turf, kind of smush it against the club face. Uh, not too good on that one, hit a little off the heel, but not too bad, definitely a decent shot up there. Not as much spin as the one before. So the, the third key here, we've got our aggressive acceleration through the ball, we've got our feet open. Let's talk about why we wanna have our body open, why we want that forward shaft lane. There's something called, a lot of people refer to this as spin loft mountain. And basically what this says is, if you can kind of imagine my angle of attack or how I'm hitting into the ground is fairly level. I'm taking a little bit of a divot here, but I'm not chopping way down into it. Hitting down just very slightly. Now, if I don't have very much loft on this face, then it's not gonna create much backspin. Imagine I had a sledgehammer and I'm just hitting this golf ball with my sledgehammer. It's gonna knock it up there. It's gonna be low because there's no loft on the sledgehammer, but it's just a knuckleball. The ball's not gonna have any backspin at all. As I start to add more and more loft, the difference between how I'm hitting down in the ball, which would be this angle, so say I'm hitting down very slightly, 
and the difference in loft on my face starts to get bigger. So here's the sledgehammer, swinging level, no loft. As I start to add loft to my club face, that creates more spin. So this is a, what they call spin loft. And the more spin loft you get, or the bigger the difference between the direction the club's swinging and the loft on the face, the bigger the difference between those two, the more spin you're gonna get. That's why you always wanna use like a 60 degree wedge or, or at worst a 56 degree wedge when you're doing this. So as I add more and more and more loft, all the way up to, uh, you know, playably kind of high 40s, low 50s amount of loft on the face, that's gonna give me the most spin. If I keep on adding loft, so kind of imagine as a mountain, as I get more and more loft, spin goes up and up and up. It kind of reaches that max around 50 degrees or so, and then it starts to lose a little bit of spin because I lose friction. There's a little bit of dirt in the way, there's a little bit of water in the way, whatever it is, you lose a little bit of friction between the club face and the ball. So as I add too much loft and I have this face way open like this, like a flop shot, it will go high, but it won't have any spin on it. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take a lofted wedge so that I keep that loft up to get the spin, but I'm also making sure that I can be nice and consistent and hit ball first by de-lofting it and swinging through. If I took a lower lofted club, like a pitching wedge or a nine iron, and I went ahead and flipped it and got the same amount of loft as I'm doing here, you really wouldn't get the spin because my strike would be too inconsistent. You wouldn't really get that compression on the golf ball, or it would be, you know, one of them you compress, one of them you wouldn't compress. It's tougher to control it. So again here, now that we realize that, I have my 60 degree wedge. I'm gonna play that ball when my feet are open. If you're looking at it from my left heel, it's just barely behind my left heel. If I had my right foot in there, it's kind of just in front of my right foot. And that's about where I like to play it to really allow myself to hit down slightly, have the shaft leaning forward and still get some pretty good spin. So again, I got my 60 degree wedge and because I'm opening, my shaft is really gonna lean ahead. I'm gonna de-loft this club slightly. I'm gonna get around that 50 degree spin loft. Oh, and that one I chunked a little bit. Didn't quite hit it as well, so not as much spin on it. Still a decent shot, but you'll notice how that one rolled out a little bit. And that's gonna bring me my, my next key here is not every single shot you're gonna spin. No matter how good you get at these, unless you're on PGA Tour, you're not gonna just spin the cover off of every single one of them. You have to hit it nice and clean. If I get anything between my face and the ball, that causes it to slide. The ball doesn't grab the face, it slides up it. So even a little bit of dirt on the face, uh, a little bit of grass, a little bit of water, anything like that is really gonna cause it to lose some spin. So you have to have your wedge really, really clean. So here, I like to keep a little brush with me. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but I just have a little brush on my bag and I just wipe off the face, keep that nice and dry and clean, keep all the stuff out of the grooves. Grooves actually are misunderstood. If you don't have any grooves on the wedge, it creates just as much spin if there's nothing between the ball and the club. It's like drag slicks on a drag car. No grooves, all rubber to pavement, pure friction. Same thing with a wedge. But in reality, every time you hit, there's a little bit of grass, a little bit of water, something getting between your club face and the, and the, and the middle of the club, or the ball in the middle of the club. And that's why you'll see little pieces of grass on your club face for where it impacted. Every time that happens, you need those grooves to allow that debris to go into the groove and for the face to grab the ball. If you had a perfect lie, you're setting it up off a tee or something like that, you wouldn't even need grooves on the club. That's why you spin it so much. Sometimes when you're on AstroTurf mats, you can really get a lot of spin on there. So here, again, I don't wanna get much stuff between my club face and the ball. So the next thing is, when I, when I do this, I wanna visualize like I'm staying pretty low to the ground and I'm just kind of brushing the turf. I am gonna get a little bit of a divot, but it's not gonna really chop down a ton. You can, have some good spin if you chop way down on it, but it's kind of hit or miss because sometimes you'll hit a little bit too far behind it, it won't really spin like you want it to. There we go, that's a nice one. It's gonna be a little short. Kicked off that down slope, but that had a lot of spin on it. Just got a, not the best kick because of the, the down slope there. All right, so now let's talk about what we're gonna do with our hips and then our hands and our arms. I open my feet so that when I hit this shot, my hips can open up. I really want them leading the way. Again, that's gonna help me deal off the club like I need to. It's gonna help me have the hands leading the way to be consistent. And I'm really gonna be aggressive through the ball if I can have those hips kind of leading the way as I'm doing that. 
That one's got a ton of spin on it, a little low one. So we one stop and really check up. So that thing's coming in low, but then it's trying to grab there at the end. Uh, so the, the hips are really key to that. Feel like your hips are opening up as that's happening. And feel like your belt buckle, especially, is facing the target. Now the last piece here again, I have to take a little bit of loft off this club so that I can be consistent and I can, I can get the spin on there. Here's the move that most people get wrong when they're trying to take loft off the club. You don't simply push the face forward or push the hands forward. When you do that, look at my club face. It's gonna open up the club face. And when I try to hit, just move the hands forward and hit that shot, it ends up going way to the right. Not a very good shot. I left it short of the green. It's not really compressed like I want it to be. The key there is that you have to deal off the club by rolling the wrist or turning the wrist. So if you imagine, I'm gonna make a little setup position here. And when I come to contact, my hands are actually gonna be like this. I'm turning that club face down. The only reason the face is square is because I have the shaft lean forward, all right? So if I, if I keep the club shaft straight up and down, there's my impact position. The only difference is when I really impact the ball, I'm actually gonna be here like this with the shaft lean forward. If I'm looking at it from this down the line view, as I'm coming into the ball, I'm rolling the face closed a little bit, and then I'm really pinching it, compressing it against the ground, or what feels like it's against the ground, covering that to really get a lot of the spin, a lot of the bite on it. Let me go ahead and clean up this wedge one more time, and we'll try to get a nice low one, again, with a lot of good spin on it. Yeah, I hit that one nicely. So those are the keys to really getting those wedges to stop, check up for you. Number one, I'm gonna open my stance a little bit. Number two, I'm gonna keep the club nice and clean. I have to have a nice lie. It can't be wet. I can't have a lot of stuff behind the golf ball like being the rough, it's not gonna spin very much. I'm gonna have my hands leaning forward, really compressing the golf ball. My hips are leading the way. And then the real secret to this, I have to have this de-lofting with my wrist, like I'm rotating this club. If I can put those together, then I can really pinch that ball, get a lot of spin on it. Now, I talked about in this video, a special move from turning your wrist down. Now, it's really cool because not only will this help you to spin your wedges, really get those to bite, grab hard on the green, it helps you to pure your iron shots and can even help with your drivers. That's what I call the move in our top speed golf system. And it's one of the missing links that takes regular golfers, everyday golfers, middle handicappers, up to being a low handicap and even seeing getting close to some hitting some pro caliber shots. I have an awesome bonus for you. I'm gonna play one of my best videos on the move with a tennis racket drill. You do this, you're gonna be spinning your wedges, you're gonna be hitting those crisp irons, and I can't wait to show it to you. Let's get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body. Again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it. The flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm gonna be